Hey, algebra students, let's look at how the formula sheet can help us with some slope and line examples as well. So directions say you may use a calculator and the GED formula sheet for any of the following. And indeed, if any of these show up on the GED math test, you would have both of those tools available to you. First one says, find the y-intercept of the line with a slope of negative two thirds that contains the point nine five. Now I want you to notice what you're looking for as well as what you've been given in order to choose the correct formula. So first of all, let's take a look at what they're asking me to find. They're asking me to find the Y intercept. Now, a common misconception that students have is that mathematicians would use the letter Y to represent the Y intercept, but we don't. So that's something to take note of. And I would write it on my formula sheet if it were me, but we use B to stand for the Y intercept. So they're asking you to find B and it says find the Y intercept of the line with a slope of negative two thirds. That's another one where we use kind of a weird letter. Mathematicians will use the letter M to stand for slope. So I'm telling you my M is negative two thirds. And then I have this weird information that it says that it contains the point nine five. So a point is a relationship between an X value and a Y value, which means the first number in your point is an X. And the second number in your point is a Y. So now that I've written it like that, it's kind of easier that we're going to go looking for the formula for us that relates B, X, Y, and M. Let's go hit up that formula sheet and see if we can find a formula like that. So here is the GED formula sheet. The first half of it is geometry. But if you scroll down to the algebra section and look at the first three formulas here, they all have to do with slope and line. Now, the third formula, it's useful, and you'll probably learn it in your college algebra classes if you go on to college algebra. But that being said, there's nothing that you can't do with the first two formulas that you would need the third one for. So I'm just going to focus on those two. And we can see the first one says slope of a line and it finds M, right? We said M was slope. See how M's alone? But notice all we see in there is X's and Y's, X's and Y's. Nothing about a B, a Y intercept. The next one though, no surprise, it's called the slope intercept form of the equation of a line. And in it, we see the letter for both slope, that's the letter M, and Y intercept. That's the letter B. And that is the formula we want because it relates B, X, Y, and M just like we wanted. As always, once we have a formula, let's plug in the information we need. So first thing we need is a Y value. And we said the second number in a point is a Y value. So I'll plug in five for Y. My equal sign stays nice and steady. We said that M stood for slope. So I'll plug negative two thirds in for my M. The M and the X are shoved together, so they're multiplying. I'll bust out parentheses to say multiplication is happening. And I also know an X value. The X value in my point is nine. Now B is what I'm solving for. So that plus B, it's still gonna just say plus B because it's still a mystery. And now this is just algebra, right? We're just gonna start relying on our algebra skills. And first thing I see here, super excited, is that I can make this equation even simpler than it is right now if I do this bit of simplification. I can do negative two thirds times nine, so I should, and it will make this guy simpler. Now you might say, Kate, I can't do negative two thirds times nine. Stop rubbing it in about your fraction skills. And I'm actually talking about my calculator skills, guys. So let's do it here. Negative fraction bar is the n over d bar. I'll type two on the top arrow down to the bottom to type three. Then we're going to make sure that I arrow out of the fraction before opening up those parentheses to say times nine. And that is negative six. And now I really have made my equation simpler. I replaced this with an equivalent value. It's equal to negative six. 
and I can drop my plus B equals five. And now it's just a one step equation to solve. Do remember a lot of students get tricked here. Should I minus, should I plus six? I see both symbols. Your goal when you have these terms, these numbers adding and subtracting is to get them to zero out to go away. And so what I need to do here is add six. If you tried to subtract six, you would just compound your issue, right? I'll just show you what I mean. If I have negative six and then I subtract six, it's not going to go away. It would get messier. But if I have negative six plus six, now that does zero out. It does go away. It does cancel. And so all I'm left with is nothing plus B or just B. And then on the left-hand side, five plus six, pretty chill no negatives to deal with anymore. It's 11, but you know, if you want to do it in your calculator because you're focused on the hard work, nobody's going to blame you. And we can see that our y-intercept or our b here is 11. Now let's compare that to the next example. This one says find the slope of the line containing the points, negative two, negative two, and one, seven. In this case, I'm finding the slope. Yes, I'm finding M, but notice what I have here. I have two points. So I have an XY and I have another XY. I have in fact, what we call a first X and a second X and a first Y and a second Y. Now's when you need that slope formula, that first formula we look at, because that one relates slope M with two X's and two Y's. It says that M is equal to what we call the change in Y's or basically the second Y minus the first Y over the change in X's, the second X minus the first X. And now that we have that correct formula chosen, we can go ahead and plug into it. So it says find M, so M's what I'm finding. It'll remain steady. Y2 minus Y1 means take the second Y and then subtract the first Y. So I'm going to do seven and I'm going to do minus. Now careful, I need to minus what Y1 is, not something like Y1, okay? And Y1 is negative two. So I need to minus negative two. For those of you who always whined and complained about why do we have minusing, minusing, here's a great example. I'm taking away a negative number. And so that's on the top. Now on the bottom, I need to do the same thing with the X's. I need to take the second X and from it subtract the first X. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna do minus negative two. And now it's all calculator work. Um, a lot of students like to simplify the top themselves, simplify the bottom themselves. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. A lot of students go, oh, I know that minus a minus is actually plus. So this is the same as seven plus two, and they'll say nine. And then same thing here, one minus minus or subtract a negative. They know it's the same thing as addition. And so say they'll say, oh, that's one plus two, and they'll say three. And then nine divided by three is three. Super nifty of you can do that, but it's okay if you can't, you can also just type the entire thing in your calculator. So let's give it a try. And when I have a long complex expression like I do here with a fraction, I'll just go ahead and put the fraction bar first and then seven minus, open up parentheses to give myself negative two. Honestly, you don't even need the parentheses, but you guys don't always know when you need the parentheses, so it's a good habit. And then one minus negative two. And there we go, three. So either way, you are going to figure out that the slope, the M, is 3. Now let's compare that to the next guy, though. It says find the slope of the line. You say, well, Kate, I'm finding the slope of the line again. Shouldn't I get the same formula? And I say, if you have the same info. But look what we have this time. With a y-intercept of b equals negative 1 and containing the point negative 3, 5. This time, we have a b and we have only one X and one Y. We need that original formula that we were looking at. Y is equal to MX plus B. Remember that an equation or formula, it can be used to solve for any of the letters in there. So this time they want us to use it to solve for slope, to solve for M. That's fine. We'll just plug in all the other letters. So let's give it a try. Our Y value is five. It's gonna be equivalent to, now M is the thing we don't know, okay? That's the thing we're finding, we're finding slope. But we do know X, X is negative three. Now you could write it like this, M times negative three 
but that might look a little weird to you because that's not how mathematicians usually write it. We usually write the number first that's multiplying and the letter second. And so I'm going to do that so as not to confuse myself or anyone else. So that's the same as negative 3m. And now that's going to be plus b. Now careful, b is negative 1. You can write plus negative 1 if you like, but I'm so lazy. I know that's the same as just minus 1, right? If you add a dollar of debt, it's the same as taking a dollar away. And now we can see, again, I just have an equation to solve. Let's go ahead and work to solve for m. Now, there isn't any simplifying I can do this time. I can't do this multiplication, negative 3 times m. I don't know what m is. I can't make it any simpler than that. And I can't do the subtracting 1 either for the same reason, because of the mystery. So all I can do here is start solving. This is a two-step equation to solve. I will get rid of any terms, anything adding or subtracting first when I'm solving. Subtracting one and adding one, zero out, cancel out. And so what I'm left with on the right-hand side is negative 3m. And on the left-hand side, there's my math, five plus one is six. And now almost done, but I need to get m alone. Now, careful, don't make that really common mistake of adding three. That three... What is it doing with M? That's actually a negative three multiplying with M. So if I want to get rid of it, I have to do the opposite of multiplying. I have to divide. And remember to divide by exactly what you want to get rid of. And then let's take a look at what we get. Six divided by negative three. Again, you can do it in your calculator if you'd like, but it's negative two. And then on the left-hand side, multiplying by negative three and dividing by negative three are opposites. They cancel. You might say they don't zero out, Kate. No, they one out, but that means that I just have one single solitary M. So there you go. There's a single solitary M. I don't have to write a one to tell you, hey, that's just one M. And I am done. Nice. So we can see how those two formulas there can really open up a whole world of slope and line problems for us. Strong work. Proud of you guys. Happy learning.